Hello, ev- Hello everyone, it's Dominic here from the British Esports Association. Today we've got a really special stream for you. We're going to be doing something different. Uh, you know, my team have been talking to me saying, Dom, you know, we can do so much more than interviews on the uh, on our Twitch channel and they're, they're absolutely right. Um, so for this interview, we're trying something different. Uh, we're going to be playing games. We're going to be playing some Rocket League and some Fortnite while I conduct an interview. And it's two very special guests as well joining me for this interview. So I've got Kieran and Joel Holmes Darby from XO Esports, co-founders and the chief gaming officer and chief uh, people officer, uh, respectfully. So thanks very much for joining us, guys. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for having us. Should be Pleasure to be on, Dom. Cool, as always. And so you're going to wow us today with your Rocket League and Fortnite gameplay, right? <laughs> I don't understand how we've ended up playing these two games, uh, com- considering our apparent <laughs> skill levels at all of them. But yeah, it should be entertaining for the viewers at least. Absolutely. I played both these games. Last time I played them both was about a year ago. Um, and I don't think Joel's ever played Fortnite, so that could be interesting. <laughs> But you've got one of the world's best players on your team, right? So, you do, yeah. I think, I'm you to be good. no, see, this is a misnomer. It's like, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge sports fan. And I'm a big fan of many, many sports, but it doesn't mean I'm good at playing any of them. Um, I think it's uh, very much the same with esports and gaming. Uh, love love watching them, but it doesn't mean I'm uh, good at playing. I'm, I'm I got to, uh, got to meet Jaden for the first time properly at a socially acceptable distance last week, um, which was which was nice, but I forgot to ask him for any tips. So unfortunately, um, I'm none the wiser. Uh, no problem. Well, with Rocket League, I'm all for, but Fortnite, I've played a lot on the Switch um, over the past year or so. So I use a controller, right? I'm a new, um, but we'll, <laughs> we'll see how we go. I think it will be fun and uh, chat, help out. Feel free to ask questions as we go. I'll try and look at my laptop and ask any questions you can uh, throw at Joel and Kieran. Uh, light-hearted questions welcome. So without further ado, uh, shall we jump into it? We're, we're going to get League first. Um, I think and just quickly, guys, as well, the reason I chose these games was Fortnite. Obviously, you recently signed Wolfies, one of the best sort of British Fortnite players, and Rocket League was a game that I remember you took part in uh, the Gfinity Elite series. I did s- suggest League of Legends, but it's tricky because you need a team of five and, you know, it's a bit, the games can be long. You have to try like really hard. That's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's going to be hard to talk and uh, talk and try at the same time. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so should, should we jump into Rocket League then? Uh, and, and shout out to Elliot, our production maestro, helping us uh, today with all this. I'm just going to jump into Rocket League. Um, I'm searching for a game. Are you searching okay. for a ranked game or is it normal, Joe? I thought we'd start gently, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're not doing bots. <laughs> no, definitely not bots. <laughs> God, this could, get, this could be interesting. Okay. So right, how do you jump again? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm using a controller. It's A, I think. Uh, Double tap. Yeah, as, as, as am I. As am I. Right, okay. La- so- last time uh, I played this, I think it was probably in the Gfinity warm up room. So. Uh, I'm, right. I'm a I'm a paddles guy. I need I need my paddles. Nice, nice. Right, I'm going to try and do my job while we're doing this, guys. So <laughs> I'm, I'm forgetting we're doing an interview as well. So I'm going to try and win the game. But yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. So, we'll win the game. You do your job, Dom. Right, we'll win the game. And I, so first, I'm going to ask about uh, the thing that has been spoken about a lot, which is how you set up Excel mm-hmm. in a pub. I know it's been done a lot, but for anyone that's not aware, tell us a bit about how you set it up because. It was a while ago now, right? Yeah, it was uh, coming on for six years now. Um, so probably five and a half years ago, um, I went to visit Kieran uh, at his university in Lancaster. Um, yeah. It was a uh, you know Saturday night. Just went for a casual beer and a burger. Oh, he scored already! Look at this! Well Come on! <laughs> We're winning, guys! Right? Do we end the stream now with Pete? <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, it was it was really uh, it was a conversation that at first was quite hypothetical in nature um you know kieran had a lot of lot of lot of big ideas for what we would do that would be different to what other esports teams were doing in the uk at the time um i've just missed and effectively it, it was nothing more than you know fun a fun proposition but the more we spoke about it the more we realized actually this was something we probably seriously could have a go at there, there wasn't 
as high like barriers to entry then as there are now. Yeah. Um, and there also wasn't the same level of, let's say, professionalism within kind of the UK esports industry six years ago as there is now. Um, so we felt like we could instantly come in and, and have an impact, make a difference. Yeah. Um, and we always laugh because kind of throughout throughout our childhood, if you like, Kieran was always the, um, you know, the one that, the, the rash one, the one that would, uh, you know, go for things without, you know, necessarily thinking it through always. And oh, I'm not sure about rash, come on, you know. <laughs> ambitious and, uh, and driven ambitious, is the yeah. words I prefer. But yeah, and, okay. Uh, and I, I was generally the one that would uh, be boring and, and take a long time to decide if I wanted to do something. And yeah. um, But actually with Excel, it, although it was definitely Kieran's idea to begin with, it was, oh, that is a goal. Oh, shot, Joe. Joe. Oh, the wall. <laughs> and, completely, <laughs> completely planned, of course. He knew oh, yeah. what they should do. Look at that. Look at that. You can't teach that. If Rick's Ronde is still in the chat, like, watch that. Uh, that was that one was for you. Um, but yeah, I basically said to him, we should do it. Um, yeah. You know, we we can get some money together. I had some savings. Uh, Kieran applied for a university grant. And really, oh no, I nearly scored Noggy. Oh, Kieran. Oh, damn. I've said, that's terrible. a good save. It's a good save if I've got any follow-up from my teammates. It's su such a good save, you got an assist for it. Like, <laughs> um, nice, nice. Oh, so, excellent. So yeah, that that was that was how it started. Um, Call of Duty was the the esport at the time that we were following really really closely as as fans and you know I, I don't want to say players because we were never anywhere near as good, but we used to play yeah. the game seriously, you know, uh, from a ranked perspective and competing on game battles and things like that. Yeah. So we decided Call of Duty was like the natural place for us to start. Yeah, I did, we did. We did a lot of competing on kind of console. I'm just, sorry, I'm just, I'm just knocked you all out of the way. I literally had an open call. <laughs> uh, we did. We did a lot of gaming on, um, on like Gears of War, Halo, like a lot of console yeah, sh that. shooter shooting game. I mean, Halo was the game I got the best at from a kind of competitive standpoint, if you like. Yeah. Um, and Call of Duty was just a natural kind of progression of that, and and we loved playing it. Um, and that was the game where, I mean, that was the first game we really played together on console. You know, we got an Xbox 360 as uh, as a Christmas present when we were younger. Um, well, that done there. That, that was like it, Robin Van Persie in the World Cup. Cool. I, I would have, I would have been impressed had you saved that bomb. I'll be honest. Oh, that was oh, awful. Sorry, I tried um, to get under the board. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, but bar our like. Um, we did a bit of PC gaming prior to that with World of Warcraft, etc. But when yeah. we got our we got our family console, which is our 360, it was kind of always those shooting, um, you know, Gears of War, Halo, Call of Duty titles. Yeah. And, and Call of Duty was the one that had the most kind of active competitive scene at the grassroots level, I think, at the time. Yeah. So it was the it was the one that was. It, it wasn't such a crazy idea to you know go and set up a team in in 2015 or 2014 um in call of duty yeah. even though the scene wasn't really developed it was at least there oh did i score that i don't feel like yeah I you did I, I completely missed it on the line to be honest with you. <laughs> no worries you no worry. me fly past it oh yeah. i'll oh. take that oh it's free free that's not bad um, yeah, I, I hear you guys, and do you know what? I, I remember getting into esports more closely as a career sort of five years ago. So you'd already existed, and you were one of the teams because I followed League of Legends closely. You're one of the teams that were active in League of Legends, but you weren't at the level you are now. Obviously, you know, I remember you being a mid to low table side, but as time went on, I saw you sort of. Oh, no, I saw That's you really improve. Uh, yeah, when, and, when, that, when we first entered League of Legends, we were quite happy to beat the university teams. You know, that was that was kind of the the, the level we were at, at at that point. Yeah. Um, and if we came, uh, there used to be the um, ESO UK Premiership, and in the top eight, generally the two university teams would come seventh and eighth, and XL would come sixth. You know, when we first got into it. Yeah. Um, and we were happy with that at the time, um, but obviously things progressed quite quickly. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And and talking of progression, you know, getting into the LEC for me, you seem to take that 
Oh, damn it. You took, you took that next leap. It's so hard, isn't it, to do this, but it's fun as well. I hope you can chat or it. God. Your, your own org, XL Esports, has said in the chat, who are these boomers? Is, is that who? Nathan? <laughs> Nathan, 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 yeah. Right, yeah, Nathan, okay. my, my virtual Zoom office tomorrow morning, nine o'clock, please. Um, <laughs> um, for me, when you took that next level is when you secured your investment and that allowed you, obviously, to apply for the LEC. Yeah, um, it was, yeah, to be honest, it was a simultaneous process at the time. You know, yeah. uh, Riot obviously announced that they were going to be taking public applications and at the time you know i don't know what odds you'd have got on us getting in at the time but i'm sure you'd have made a lot of money had you been able to bet on it um yeah. and ba basically you know we agreed as a as an organization at the time that it was a it was a long shot but we wanted to go through the process because i mean effectively what was required of us you know in the application stage was to write a plan of what we would do with excel you know in in the next five years yeah. um were we to get in and writing that plan as an exercise was enjoyable it was a mental challenge that uh you know required a, a lot of people that were involved at excel at the time to yeah. put a lot of time into thinking how would how would we run excel if yeah. we got into the lec and, and we got the investment required I don't think we've talked about that whole process a whole lot, actually. Because um, it was done quickly. in secret, right? Behind closed yeah, doors. Yeah, and, just... and obviously, you know, the contents of, of what was asked for is kind of, you know, Riot Confidential, but it, it's it's pretty pretty obvious, I would assume, that, you know, it was a, they were asking for a plan. Yeah. Um, and within, whilst we were writing that and doing that in the background, you know, Kieran and I set off to, to find the investment that was required to, to back it up. And we couldn't really proceed in the process without one or the other. You know, we needed a superb um, application and a superb business plan, but we also needed yeah. the financial backing um, to support that plan to actually, you know, execute on it where, if we were successful. Um, yeah, because I think people have a slight, uh, I mean, people don't, see the process and i wish we could have shared more of it and we probably could you know, do some form of redacted version and, and show some of the application some people have been privy to see the 170 page application that we put together yeah um, it's quite quite a bit of work and and what i think was brilliant about it and why it was so useful um was because it did work as both a it was like we were pitching to riot at the same time as pitching to investors with mm. the kind of same business plan and both we needed both riot and our investors to to back it in order for it, for it to be successful yeah. um, and obviously ultimately we got the um, the jrj group to back the bid um who are are now investors and you know fly out to berlin with us to go and see riot etc um, and and stand there side by side with us in in, in the process. Yeah. Um, but that, I think people kind of assume that it was you know once you got the money you're in, but actually time, you know riot take it based on the business kind of plan and kind of assume that you've got the money. Both, we, um, yeah. both based on the business plan, if that makes sense. So there were there were lots of other organisations who had the required funds, um, yeah. who, who weren't successful based the, on the JRG business plan essentially. Back. So yeah. it was it was it was. You look obviously looking back it's a massively life-changing process and a very enjoyable experience to have gone through but it was yeah. a lot of work it was a lot a lot of work and um yeah we locked ourselves away for a few months to get it done yeah. um before even going out to market and it's quite a daunting Ooh. thing to try and go and get that level of investment that's work yeah. um, Thank you. because you know we, we don't have any joel and i don't have history of in, in you know it, it, of investment relations we don't have family that we can call upon to yeah you know talk to x y and z we literally had to go out cold to the industry um and go hey you know this esports Ooh. thing that's quite exciting well we've got quite a cool thing that we you know that we're that we're pitching yeah um, and we had some interesting conversations with some very interesting people during that period yeah um, and ultimately landed with some fantastic partners but and that's you hard know, to do as well, right? Because a lot of orgs now, they, they struggle with the investment and taking it to the next level. You, how did you go about that? Because I've looked into things like that. I, I run a news site in my spare time and it's not easy. You know, there are so many sites out there, angel investors and this and that. How mm. did you go about that actually approaching? And, you, you know, would it be cold emails or calls and then trying to get a meeting? My, my experience is that 
whether it's commercial partners or investors, cold emails and cold calls are little to worthless, to be honest yeah. with you. And, 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 it's, and it's all about the network. And bearing yeah. in mind, Joel and I were starting with nothing and no network. We had to network. You know, we had to find people. It was, it was, it was speaking to pe- friends of friends, essentially, to start with. Yeah. And then speaking to their friends and, and their friends. And then you start to quickly build a, a network of some of high, high net worth individuals yeah. who do have the links that you need to basically get into these people. Yeah. Um, you know, we know that there are companies out there, um, you know, Gfinity is publicly listed. You know, they, they, they've got links into all, all sorts of um, uh, no. different potential investment vehicles, etc. So, yeah. There was, and we were competing in the Gfinity Elite Series at the time, so you know we looked there for an avenue. We looked course, at any yeah. any any snippet of you know, possible network we could find. We took, and as I say, quickly had some very interesting conversations with some very interesting people. Yeah, absolutely. And so you've got. Can I ask? You've got multiple investors. Is that right? Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Is that yeah, hard? So, you know, to, to the, manage all that. The, well, the, the investment group is is a consortium essentially led by the JRJ group. So the JRJ yeah. group are a private equity firm in the UK, and there are our, our key contacts. You know, all, all of the uh, all of our investor management relations is, is really managed through them. We yeah. also had a strategic partner, as most people know, throughout the process, and an investor, Dave Harris, who's quite yeah. a well known figure in, especially in in Oz, um, in the Australian esports world. Um, he was a massive part of the the process and also was a massive part of us getting introductions to to people that we needed instructions to etc yeah um, but as i say ultimately it was the um it was the jrj group who led the consortium for the bid sorry joe i've knocked you out the way and took your car uh, there, absolute thunder steal this watch this my eyes have lit up here i've got oh, oh, no. glory. He's knocked me out I went in for the glory oh dear i oh, dear. Hey, i respect it i respect hey, it if it goes in i'll let you off Okay. All right. Now that's that's interesting, uh, Kieran, because there's a lot, uh, you know, for a lot of your fans, they they'll see the matches, the LEC matches, and the Fortnite matches. They won't always see what's behind the scenes. I, I think in esports it's good because a lot of managers like yourselves do have a good public uh, brand and image, you know, so people can get to know you. Um, that's kind. And I've forgotten what the second half of my what I was leading into there. What question I was leading mainly into? Mainly because you were going to go for a 50-50 dollar. It <laughs> um, I was going to ask about your LEC. Ooh, oh, 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 unlucky, unlucky. Nearly. nearly. I, I was going to ask about your LEC journey next because you've you've had a couple of difficult splits, but you've worked hard. Mm-hmm. You've made changes in the staff, and, and for me, you've made some uh, positive sort of. Um, oh no. <laughs> Um, what's the what's the word? Uh, Very loud. You've shown what you could do. Your your potential. You know, you've shown your potential there. What, what's it been like? Your your journey in the LEC so far? I mean, it's been it's been it's been extremely challenging and extremely rewarding. You know, we we said for a very 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 long time. You know, even before LEC applications kind of becoming up. Oh! <laughs> we take those. We take yeah. those. You know, even even before yeah. those applications be, being. A reality it was a dream of ours to compete in the LEC um, yeah. you know we it, it's always been the major competition uh, it, particularly in Europe I um, mean you know, it's League of Legends esports obviously one of the biggest esports in the world globally um, and we wanted to compete at the highest level for it for many 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 years before we were given the chance to yeah um, you know that that being said when when we got in and when we were accepted our company was tiny compared to what we are now and we're only talking sort of 18 months maybe you know coming up to two years later yeah Um, you know now we're sitting at kind of over 30 employees at the time i think it was three um you know full time at least and that that growth didn't happen over two years it happened over two months it felt like so you know, we had a, a massive amount of expanding to do and, and maturing to do as a company in an extremely short space of time. You know, from a from a competitive standpoint, yeah, um, we were you know one of the the last teams to be able to put together a roster uh, early on in in the 2019 um, split. So mm. you know, it was it was a, a challenge, and I think we 
we certainly gave it our best and obviously the results weren't you know have not been fantastic for us in the lec yet mm -hmm. um i think what what i hope we've shown so far is our willingness to compete you know we we didn't have a lot of success in 2019 and we went out and made some pretty big moves in in the space bringing in people like young buck to to be our head coach and um fabian who's our, our head of performance that's you know previously worked with kind of schalke and origin and is renowned within the kind of performance management space in in league of legends as being you know as world class as, as joey is as a, as a coach yeah absolutely. Uh, you know i think by by making these these moves and by continually you know tweaking the roster and looking for you know whether it's we've tried you know importing experience from abroad we've tried we're trying rookies mm -hmm. um you know we're, we're absolutely absolutely not at all satisfied with where we finished over the last sort of three splits and yeah. i think for me that's one of the most challenging things is you know i do read reddit which i probably shouldn't but you know, people are like um they, you know excel are having having another bad split um are they even trying and it's like yeah uh -huh. yes and then people are jumping to our defense to be honest and, and mm -hmm. saying you know they they've made a lot of moves they've you know you've got bt as a headline partner they've yeah. signed young buck as a coach like they clearly are trying and, and we really are like uh, we are above all else competitive uh, and we want to win and yeah. I will not be satisfied until we've won the LEC. I don't know how long it'll take to do, but 100% that is the goal. And it's hyper competitive um, as well, right? So I look at, I watched an interview the other week, I think it was uh, with Thorin and um, uh, the Mad Lions coach. And they were talking about, you know, they had the conversations at the start of, uh, before the season of, you know, do we want to be a mid to low table side or do we want to really challenge? And they said, yeah, we want to really challenge. So they tried to change things and now they're, you know, are being known almost as like giant killers, you know, on the day they can beat some of the biggest teams and now they're up there. So it's it's really competitive, you know, there's not room. Someone has to finish first and someone has to finish at the bottom. Yeah, I mean, you you're know? talking about the 10 best teams in Europe, right? It, and and it is insanely competitive. And Europe being the strongest league, arguably, in the world. Oh, you know, it, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm over overstating it by saying mm. that they're the, you know, I mean, okay, Maybe China, but yeah, clearly, it's clearly top there's two. a top. Clearly, there's a top two, or maybe a top three leagues. But mm. Europe is up there, and we've only got ten teams, and it's hyper, super competitive. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, it it would it infuriates me to see anyone commenting about you know the fact are we even trying with the blood, sweat, and tears that we've that you put we've in, put they don't in. see it, yeah, and, and and they don't get to see that, and and nor you know nor nor should they. I mean, we yes, we could do a better job of maybe drawing back the curtain and showing a bit more of the the day to day but i think we do a pretty good job of that i think yeah. at the end of the day the results will speak for themselves you know and we're, yeah. it, we're not happy with not not winning and we want to be winning so we'll continually change until we are winning yeah that's, exactly that's kind of that got to be the mentality like we constantly want to get better uh, at all aspects not just you know our league of legends team's performances on the rift but mm. you know our, our commercial team our marketing team uh, every, every aspect of what we do the idea is uh, you know every every six months we look back at those six months and say did we get substantially better yes or no yeah and if the answer is yes we're we're on the right track it's not an instant process but you know, that, we're that, that's the thing that gives me a lot of uh satisfaction or, or confidence at least is we are moving in the right direction um we we, we just missed out on playoffs last split with a with a result that in, in the previous um, year would have granted you playoffs. You know, yeah. that, that scoreline would have got us playoffs. It wasn't good enough in the split that we got it. Um, so that at least gives me confidence that we are moving gen you know, genuinely in the right direction. Yeah. Um, so, and, yeah. and you mentioned commercial team and you mentioned BT as well. So for those that don't know, oh my goodness, you have a uh, BT XL uh, sort of sister team or academy team uh, in League of Legends as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know that was an impressive deal when you announced your partnership yeah. with BT earlier this year. What what's that been like? You know, what's their involvement been like? Because they seem to be taking quite a, a proactive uh, sort of level of involvement over than just a shirt sponsor. Yeah, so, they're yeah, highly engaged. Like it's great. It's been a few yeah, right. landmark moments. Obviously, the the LEC, you know, getting into the LEC is a massive landmark moment for Excel for me. Mm. 
um, signing BT as a headline partner is right up there as well. Um, in yeah. terms of the landmark moments for the um, for the company, oh, nice. to have a brand that you know is arguably, if not definitely, the the biggest brand in the UK, yeah. put their faith and confidence in our in our plan and in our journey, and can see where we're going and want to be a part of that. Yeah. That was a massive, massive deal for us. Like not not talking about the revenue it brought in or anything like that. Like just talking from like a strategic journey point of view. Yeah. Um, huge absolutely massive and then for them to say that they they really want to you know have naming rights to our academy team and they want to invest in that journey and us you know finding the best talent etc that's mm. awesome that's awesome you want a partner that wants to invest in your journey properly not just give you money to slap their logo on things right yeah, um, yeah. They're, they're genuinely invested on a strategic level in in our journey and that's what we want yeah uh, i want to ask we've got some questions coming in here uh, I saw we, one that's what rank is this? This is uh haven't played the game in two years, my friend. This, I don't know uh, what rank this is. I will say this I, team, I'm finding them quite hard. They're flying through the air. I can't do that that well. The issue, is the, the issue is we're awful, uh, Dom. That is the issue here. But yeah, yeah. Is, this is a fun stream. We thought we'd do an interview while playing some matches, but don't worry, we'll get Fortnite next, so the guys are much better. Oh, yeah, we're, no. we're, we're so much better at that. <laughs> Yeah. How have we got three avid World of Warcraft players oh. together on stream? Oh, I know. We should have done properly. PvP, shouldn't we? Yes. We should have done some PvP. Yeah, yeah we'll have to next do that. stream. Um, we had a question from 96. Uh, thank you for asking the question. What what can an all do to topple the likes of Fnatic and G2? I mean, that's a million dollar question, isn't it? That's what everyone wants to do in Europe. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge question. I mean, I... I I assume, I assume the question is competitively um, and topple them in the sense of competing with them in the LEC and, and you know, winning the, the trophy. That, you yeah. know, that's my assumption. I'll, I'll, um, I'll take the, the brand marketing stance after you've taken the competitive stance, if you like then, Joel, because I take the question slightly differently, but yeah. Sure, I think I've just scored the equaliser, by the way, so we're oh, in business. Oh, beautiful. Guys, how okay, we Mom. He's confirmed competitively. Um, yeah, I mean, what... What you need to, I mean, there's there's a simple answer, and then obviously there's there's the detail. Um, mm. You need to assemble a roster, and that goes all the way through from the, you know, the five starting players to the five supporting players or six supporting players, um, to the coaches, the analysts, the performance management. That entire organization from top to bottom needs to be world class and and synergized and synergized that's um, the key thing because it's like football isn't it you could have the best team in the world with a coach that just doesn't get along with one player and that can be the difference in you know yeah. reaching the world's fight or whatever you know it really yeah. can it is, it's so many factors isn't it and, and i guess the point is that saying that is is the simple answer the complicated bit is actually executing on mm. that because you know Everyone can have their opinion on these five players are really good. Everyone can have an opinion on these five players yeah. who work really well. But it's about actually having scientific process behind that to identify the talent. So, you know, scouting, analytics, uh, yeah. date, you know, data, everything. Um, and then scientific coaching processes to actually make those players better. Oh, no. um, then there's the... The, the synergy point, you know, comes down to everything from personality types to, mm. um, you know, player mentality. You know, how does that player respond in different situations, etc. So you've got to. That, that's where, basically, the art or the science is. That's why you hire people that are experts at doing that, mm. and you give them you give them the resources they need. You know, you, you unleash the experts. You unleash the young bucks of the world. Yeah. And, and the Fabians and you know all the players that we signed to do what they are world class at. And um, it's hard for you guys as well, isn't it? Because you've had people from the start, people like Bonetto, who have been there with you guys for a long time. And sometimes you know you've had to make difficult decisions and bring in other people. Oh, how did I miss that? You know that can't be easy at all. No, I mean one. I mean right, yeah. Ryan's been with us for years, and that's because Ryan's amazing. Um, you know, when you find good people in this industry you want to keep hold of them um, yeah. and Ryan's a, an excellent part of our team he's filled a, a variety of different roles for us over the years and you know, he's a, a prime example of someone that you know is, is a hard worker he's talented he's clever um, and he buys into what we're trying to do and mm. you need people like that behind you you know this is way 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 more than 
even from day one, it's been way more than a two-person venture. You know, we we thrive for years off the the work of volunteers and people that were just passionate about esports that wanted to help, yeah. and you know, who are now some of my closest friends in the world. Some of them are still involved in in XL to this day. Ryan being an example. Some have been involved but have have moved on, but we still you know talk every day or talk every other day. And yeah, yeah they're very close friends. And we we met each other through esports and through our shared passion for it yeah that's really good and someone asked in the chat i see i think it was will you be moving into fifa i mean that brings me on to a question other games you always said from the start you focus on league of legends and we'll look at other games yeah. as and when i guess is that i mean in our in our history we've been involved in countless other titles you know there's almost there's almost no current esport in the world that we haven't been involved in at some mm. point mobile yeah. games aside yeah um, uh, I mean uh, a, lot of, so a lot a lot of my job today is exactly focused on that point is you know if if we're not going to be in what titles do we want to be in and why um, we have the appetite to expand beyond League of Legends we've shown that by picking up a Fortnite player in in, in Wolfies yeah. um, we're now in what is essentially the big two from a viewership perspective on live stream platforms yeah. um, League of Legends and Fortnite consistently top the live streaming platforms um, then it's about okay FIFA a great example we're, we're a British brand football has massive you know cultural ties in 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 the UK um, what could we do in FIFA that makes sense is it pick up a player you know is it just create some content around it what what is it um, those questions are you know, I say largely part of my job and, and the team that I work with job to, to figure that out yeah. but unfortunately it's not a it's, it's not an easy question to answer because you know, we don't know yet we haven't done the the research necessary in order to decide whether fifa makes sense for us or not you know yeah. world of warcraft we're there's three world of warcraft fans here does that make sense that's a game that's been around and consistently held decent viewership etc for, for years should we be doing something around that you know all of these questions are are things that we need to answer and and we have now a way of answering them it just takes time yeah 100 percent yeah, I think um, there, there was a necessity when we got into the LEC to narrow our focus and really try and hone in on getting that business right. And it, yeah. and it's still not 100% right. To be honest, I don't think it ever will be 100% right. I, I think if you ever get to that point, you've got complacent. Yeah. Oh, he's only oh, no. it. Sorry, that was Siri talking Come to me. I'm trying to bring my list of questions back up and it's hard to play at the same time. <laughs> so, so Siri, I've got your I'm got not your sure we call this playing anyway. But, um, but yeah, we, we, we 100 percent will expand into other titles as and when it becomes a good idea to do so. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's part of our, you know, our strategy to be relevant in gaming, um, not just esports, but but gaming as a broader term yeah. um, across different genres and different titles. You can't do that if you just restrict yourself to one title. But we we're also, uh, let's say. We're very pedantic about if we're going to go into something, we are going to do it properly and we are mm. going to dedicate the resource it requires to compete, to win, um, to improve over time. And so we won't go into a title if we don't feel we can do that. 100%. Um, and uh, that, guys, that's the process. Just just quickly, should we switch over to Fortnite? Because it's, it's 20 to 5, so it'd be good yeah, to know. We we can switch just when we brought draw, after we draw attention to the fact that Dom is getting hard carried by me and Joel at the moment. Uh, I saw the goal in that match, right? didn't I? Or the, the previous <laughs> match? I was defending well, I think. Uh, brilliant. You are you are doing mid air things a lot better than me. I will say that. I will say that. Um, people asking questions in the chat. There's a lot. If I miss any, please save them uh, for the end if you can. We did have a question from someone asking about Valorant, and I know we've asked about games. Uh, in general, yes, but Valorant answer. is the game of the moment, isn't yeah. it? So what are your general uh, views on that? Exactly the same answer as, as before, except with the caveat that it obviously has had a big explosion on, onto the scene. But then again, yeah. you know, Apex Legends had 50 million players in its first weekend. You know, that, that was that was something that also had the same explosion, um, if you like. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I, I think we, we are... Uh, a, as a company in general, we're quite keen to, if, as Joel says, if we're going to do something, we're going to do it properly. And to do something properly, you need to do your research. So I don't think right now we have enough data on Valorant to know 
what we want to do around it, but it's clearly mm. a title of interest. We have a great relationship with Riot through the LEC. Um, yeah. So it's clearly a title of interest and clearly a title that, that could w- work for us strategically, but we just haven't done the work necessary at the moment to know what that looks like. And to be honest, we just don't have enough data because the game only like launched this month. Mm. So... <laughs> So we just need, yeah, we, we will we will take our time on that one, but just know that if we do anything, we'll do it properly. Yeah, 100%. Rick's Ronde has asked, does XL as an org miss the Gfinity Elite Series, hoping to see XL back in Rocket League? Now, Gfinity did say about half a year ago they're exploring the option of coming back to the Elite, Elite Series. Since then, they've done a lot of stuff around F1 and other initiatives. What are your thoughts there, guys? Because I, I miss it. I think it was, it was quite unique. Mm. The Elite Series gave me my first opportunity to really do Excel full time. To be honest with you, mm. um, having having being able to build a business plan around what was essentially a franchise league, you could you you could plan out your year plan. You actually had something tangible to um, to sell to commercial partners, etc. It, yeah. it gave us a lot of stability, and as I say, allowed me to to do Excel full time for the first time. Mm. Um, uh, I, I don't want to, you know, go into the specifics around Gfinity or the Elite Series too much, to be honest with you. But for for what it was at the time, it was massively beneficial for XL. Um, yeah. Things didn't work out, and it couldn't continue. Um, would I like to see something in in a similar vein return to the, you know, to the UK? Yeah, of course. Like, you know, I think that the structure around it was great, um, but it had its setbacks, and um, and it didn't work out. Yeah, no, that's fun. I think so. We're loading up Fortnite, guys. I've got Elliot in my ear helping us out. Um, if we just go, uh, just really quickly, bear with us, uh, people watching the stream. If we just go into settings and just change your um, uh, music level to 50%, I'm just trying to. Uh, yeah, my really loud in my ears right now. Do this now. Yeah, okay. All right, one second. Uh, yeah, I mean, in, look. In answer to your question, Tom, I worked, I worked for Gfinity on the Elite Series as a product for a you know a year of my life. Mm. It was a it was an amazing product. Um, how you know some amazing events. Some of my favourite esports memories are, are from the Elite Series. Um, it it didn't it didn't work out clearly as a, a product. You know, at, at the time I left, there was a lot of uncertainty, and and obviously subsequently we've seen it. It didn't carry on. I don't know ever. I don't know at this point whether it. Uh, you know ever would return i do think it it suffered a little bit from being slightly ahead of its time um just because uh it it was so well ran and so professionally done in a lot a lot of areas and it's expensive to do that um and to try and make it work as a as a commercial proposition was a was a tough challenge for the the guys whose responsibility that was um but it was it was amazing as a product um i would love to see it or something like it return again in the future Mm. um, providing it can be done sustainably uh, for both the teams involved and and also obviously the 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 third party organizer um, such as such as Gfinity Um, 100% yeah guys if you just check I've moved my all my audio settings to 50% there were five options so you might need to do that and we've got some more yeah I've done that Okay, great. Um, we've got some more good questions. Should we just I've jump in first? Well, Tom, yeah. How, yeah, go on. How blooming hot is it today? I oh, am. No. I am sweating. <laughs> it is so warm today. It I've is. Got a few on me. I can't complain too Jeez. much. I've got the uh, I've got the garden, and that you know that's reminded me, guys. What's the setup like? Because I know that some of you your players are, are living together, right? Are you all in the same place? What What's your situation like? Your working situation? You mean post post COVID or yeah? I, I guess at the moment and how that might change as well. Are you separate from the players or are you all? We are now at the minute. Yeah, we right. you know we we went quite early on in the kind of lockdown process. We we took the decision kind of slightly ahead of of government regulations to kind of send everybody home effectively. Yeah, um, or at least send everybody to to self isolate. Um, now for for our players that were in Berlin, they were already together. Um, so, you know, it, it almost made sense to just keep everybody together. Same with the, the guys based at the houses in Twickenham, um, yeah. our BTXL roster. Those guys were already kind of living together and, and isolating together. So the, the only real difference we made was people stopped going into the office. Mm. Um, so I, I'm currently at home, Kieran's at, at his home. 
I feel like I've been here all year. Um, it's crazy how long it's been. Yeah, it, it's gone very fast. Just, but yeah, yeah, it has gone. Just, quickly. just normal life for me now. Um, like you know, working working from home, which which I used to hate. I used to despise working from home. I used to love going to the office, but yeah. Um, you so used to work from home. I'm I'm I'm, I'm good at it now. So <laughs> <laughs> we had a question um, here from uh, Bobby who asked about your opinion on uh, esports degrees in the UK at the moment. That was a hot topic recently, um, and you know, for me, there are lots of different courses now. Some are better than others. What are your general views on people getting degrees in esports? Should we drop straight away, by the way? Like oh, now. oh, hang on, this is a good point. Do you know what? No, 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 I haven't I'm, played I'm much. Of chapters. <laughs> Tell me when to drop. I, I'm, I'm tempted I'm to go ready. around Frenzy Farm. I'm I don't know where that is. Right, so I, follow I don't me. know how to even bring up my map right now. Yeah, when, uh, just tell I, us when we go out. Yeah, I've set a marker, so ready? <laughs> Three, two, one, let's go. Out. Right. There Deal. we go. And so while you're oh, jumping. It's lagging big time. So yeah, well, oh, no. well plummeting to uh, what's likely to be a very swift end to this game for me. Um, opin opinion on esports degrees. So, first of all, we're quite we're quite pro education. Kieran and I, you know, we both have degrees, um, mm. and you know, we see a lot of value in the the degrees that we got. Even though, you know, for for Kieran who who did one in law, it's not like he's using it every day. He's not gone on to become a lawyer. There is mm. there is value in getting one. So, for, first of all, I'd say regardless of what degree you're interested in doing i think there is value in doing a degree um obviously some degrees have more real world practical application from day one than others yeah um but doing a degree teaches you skills you know critical thinking skills um and you know just going to university teaches you life skills that i think you uh, are harder to get kind of if you if you stay at home so i've always been pretty pro university anyway um that being said like esports degrees are the, the the difficulty with the higher education sector aka like universities uh, i'm in a i'm in a gunfight uh, sorry I've got someone there yeah I killed someone downstairs um the, the the difficulty is that there isn't like one exam board that monitors all of these degrees right it's the university's discretion yeah. Um, and and so it's it's relatively it's not unregulated, but you know what I mean. Like it's it's inconsistent. Oh, there's someone there, Dom. Kieran, are you down? Yes. Yeah, down. Sorry, lads. My uh, my computer was not not handling the game there. Um, it, it oh, now God. is. Good, but yeah, I am dead. <laughs> this guy's a lot better than me. <laughs> you... oh, no, I'm out of ammo. What am I doing? Get him. Oh, get him no, and get me no, up. no, no. I'm down. I'm, I'm not going to be yeah, able to do game this. Over. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, I think ultimately oh, no, 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 no. there is value in in doing it an esports degree. Do I think doing an esports degree makes you more qualified to work in the esports industry than someone that doesn't have an esports degree? Probably no. Hmm. Um, obviously, it shows it shows uh, an inherent passion, and passion is really important. But you can show that passion through kind of other means. Um, yeah. But that being said, I, I don't agree. I don't agree with some of the commentary I've seen around those degrees being, you know, a waste of time or anything like that. I completely yeah. don't agree because you no. learn, you learn That's from those degrees the skills that you would get from other degrees. It, the, the topic, the topic is less important. Mm. Yeah, I think I think I I posted a um, quick voice chat on Twitter about this quite recently because I saw it popping up a lot and I basically said exactly what Joel's just said so I haven't mm. got too much to add but um, certainly I think getting a degree is a is a strong idea um, yeah. and and you know if, if we're hiring for a marketing role we're probably looking for someone with a marketing degree who has a passion for esports as opposed to someone with an esports degree but it also massively depends on what the content of that degree is yeah um, for sure so, you know, if, if, if there are loads of marketing modules on that esports degree and it was kind of an esports marketing degree, that's probably a different conversation. Mm. Um, yeah, I haven't seen one like that yet, but... And, no, you, easy, it's 100% right. And, you know, for me as well, guys, I, I studied multimedia journalism at university. Yes, I learned about journalism. Actually, I learned a lot more in my first job, right? Yeah. I learned a lot getting experience. Um, but also... I came out of my shell at university, you know, I learned life skills, finance skills, you know, 
university was the best time of my life, to be honest. Yeah, you know, I'm lucky. Uh, I met my wife at uni. Uh, I'm really lucky, you know, and I learned a lot more than just the academic side of things. So there's that to consider as well. And I can hear your arguments. I can hear both for and against as well, degrees. But um, it's an interesting yeah, topic. You don't need a degree, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not saying, it, you know, absolutely have to get one. All, all I'm saying is we both did one and we both found it very beneficial and valuable and enjoyable. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, therefore place, especially, like, it's more important to do well at university than it is to do a specific subject, I mm. feel. You know, because if you can show that you applied yourself to a subject you were passionate about, and you came out with you know a two one or, or a first that mm. for me is more important than what the topic was and it's the same for a lot of even graduate employers kind of outside of the esports industry they don't care what your degree was in they just care what grade you got and that yeah. you got a degree 100 uh, percent. i've got a question here right if we're jumping out here i've got rachel geneva said fascinating discussion thank you um how do you see the future of orgs are the big ones now established or is there still room for new ones to come up on the main stage Oh, good question. Um, I mean, it's it's very uh, right. I'd say first of all, the barriers to entry now are higher than they were when we started six years ago. That being said, there is absolutely still the chance that some of the big orgs today are not the big orgs in a few years, and likewise, someone you've not heard of today becomes one, and that can oh, happen no. from like a variety. I've of just to an NPC. Yeah, we're in a blooming. Who chose this? We're in a NPC uh, area. I need, <laughs> right, I need a weapon. I chose this. Okay, let's get you a weapon. Uh, Wait, I there. think this guy can get me up. They're the other side of the caravan. Mushy Khan's getting me up. Uh, really? Our fourth oh, member. That's our fourth member. Okay. Oh, what, Thank you, what Mushy. A legend. Wait. Wait, did I? What are you doing? You're carrying that NPC. <laughs> oh, oh, I just on. died to one. So. Oh? What's going on here? Oh no, I'm out of ammo. I think I've got a shotgun. That looks useful. Anyway, um... <laughs> sorry, this whole... Carnage! <laughs> this is more our level, isn't it, guys? This is absolutely carnage. Um, right. But yeah, Sorry. I think I think there's absolutely still room for teams that we, we haven't heard of yet to ascend to being major organizations it's harder to do now and it, i don't think you can necessarily do it without substantial investment anymore yeah. um you know i think you you need money to do it yeah. um initially again it really does depend on what esport title you're talking about but in general i think you need investment or you know at least some capital to start with i don't think you can do it on a shoestring like we did six years ago um but it's still absolutely possible i don't think it's uh, set in stone at all. Super tough, isn't it, as an org these days? To, oh, look, there's more uh, here. Yeah, mass it's, it's massively the barriers to entry have increased so much that you, you just can't do what we did five years ago today. <laughs> that's um, our teammate, Joel. That's our teammate. <laughs> <laughs> it was disguised, I, just, I, I, I just, I'm leaving him alone. My entire ammo clip into them, so that, that's GG. Leave him alone. Um, Sorry. That's all right. Uh, <laughs> We should probably uh, think about what we're doing here, shouldn't we? So, I'll, hang on, I'm going to... Uh, oh. I don't know what this stuff is that I've picked up. Slump mushroom. <laughs> well, that Does gives that me stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Stuff. Press the button, ask questions later. I've got a shield potion here. Uh, right, there was another question I wanted to ask, and then I'll go on to some more. GG Yummy says, How do you balance spending on a good roster slash player buyout? versus spending on infrastructure in the future. Is that a question Ooh. for you guys or would you sit with really, really good to... question. No, no, yeah, it's a super good question. Yeah, legit question. I mean, I'd say you definitely have to find a balance because the, the industry is, is as such and it's, it's competitive as such that you can't just, you know, you can't just for five years say, oh, we're, you know, we're a development project, we're investing in our, only in our infrastructure. You know, you have to put some investment into the rosters and to try and compete. Um, but you know we we are all about doing that sustainably, yeah. um, and that sustainability comes in by planning for the future and trying not to, you know, massively overspend for the sake of overspending, um, and to because like I said, we want to win, right? And you're not un unfortunately in most competitive things these days, it's very very hard to win and compete without investing funds in that element of it. But yeah. I also think it's 
don't want to say irresponsible, but it's not clever to just spend your entire budget on talent and have nothing, no plan for how you're going to develop that talent and mm -hmm. how you're going to improve over time. Like infrastructure is hugely important, if not more important, to be honest. Um, and so we definitely try and strike a balance. I don't want to sit on the fence here and, and not give like a definitive answer, but that is just the honest truth. You know, I don't think you can, I think if all you do is spend on talent, you're making a mistake. If all you do is spend on infrastructure, you're never going to compete. You have yeah. to do both. That's a good answer. Can I, and also we're playing Fortnite now, guys, it's, it's a good chance to talk about Wolfie. So you obviously signed him, I think it was a few months ago and he, he's won or he, he became runner up at ninety five thousand uh, dollar FNCS. Did he did he take home ninety five thousand dollars? What what's it been like signing Wolfies and moving into Fortnite? Yeah, I mean we know that Fortnite is very prize money orientated for the for the players, um, mm. and it's a completely different ecosystem for us to enter than the LEC, for instance, League of Legends. Like it couldn't be more opposite on the other end of the spectrum. But we just felt like, especially with the opportunity to sign one of the best players in the world who is also British, the, mm. uh, that it made sense strategically, um, and that actually we could, you know, we could be one of the organisations that. Um, that takes a, a young prospect like uh, Wolfies and yeah. makes him a more well-rounded professional, not just not just in terms of you know how he performs in Fortnite and how we make sure he can sustain that level of performance over the next five ten years. Mm. Um, you know, implementing our performance philosophy, also how he engages, you know, how he builds his brand outside of the game as well. Yeah. Um, and we felt like we were well placed to basically help him do that. Um, and hopefully he'd agree, <laughs> um, given that uh, given that he signed with us, of course. Uh, and yeah, it's been it's been a really really interesting start to um, learn about the Fortnite world. Obviously, it's come at quite a good time with the FNCS Invitational, which Wolfie's then did really well at. Now we've got season three launch. There's a whole load of content we can create around that. Yeah. Um, I, I think what's really super interesting about the whole Fortnite thing is most people will have said that you know, it got, I kind of comes back to my, my point earlier around how we will assess a title and study it and look at the data before actually choosing to go into anything. Yeah. A lot of people jumped on the Fortnite hype a long time ago. Um, we waited until it had kind of stood the test of time um, and then we jumped into it. Um, so sure. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of how we look at things as a company. Yeah, a I mean... Here, lads. I'm in a gunfight. Oh no, I'm trying to help you. Oh, there you go. Well played. We won. You finished them off. Sorry, I think I attracted the attention of some NPCs um, earlier. I missed a shot and they all turned around and ran towards it. Just on, on the tournament thing, Kieran, because some people ask this or are unsure. And to be honest, uh, it seems to change depending on org and things like that. What, what's the deal with, obviously, say if you can't answer it, what, what's the deal with prize money and things like that? You, do the players tend to take a, a large share of that in, in games like Fortnite? Because it's different in League of Legends, right, because it's franchise. But in tournaments you enter, you, I guess you have a deal, an agreement in place with Wolfies as to what he takes and and so yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, we can't really discuss specifics. Sorry, uh, you cut out a bit there. The, the... Kieran, I think the lag yes. may be on your end. Sorry, I think, I think I might be lagging, guys. But essentially, okay. for, from my, my perspective, the business model is very, very different. Um, I won't go into specifics about about that, but the the business model is yeah completely different in in Fortnite than it is in, in League of Legends. Yeah, got you. That, that's yeah, fine. Prize money is um, ha, has always been uh, you know a hot topic in in esports, and you know it's it's fair to say that the, it, the model is completely esports dependent as such. Mm. Um, but it's in some in some esports, it's very oh. similar to sports. Um, such as League of Legends, but in things like Fortnite, it's a bit more traditional, traditional esports, yeah. and that you know that means players obviously benefit greatly from winning prize money. So well, that guy was jumping around like a madman there. I haven't seen that before. Well, I don't know how we did that whole hook thing. I'm quite jealous. I'd quite like to. Guys, go. oh, we had to leave our little uh, sort of house we had, didn't we? Because the uh, the, the the storm circle thingy. Well, I want to get high ground really because I like my sniper rifle and we're out on the in the open. All right, at the okay. moment. You're you're the Fortnite pro, Dom. We'll follow you <laughs> on Switch. You know, the first game I played, I got a victory royale, and I tweeted about it saying I've got a victory royale in my first game, and everyone was saying, "Yeah, it's 
versus bots, Dom. I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, your first game is versus bots. You know, they, they've added bots in now. So I, I, I'm always conscious of playing Switch, knowing that I'm up against other mobile gamers and bots and things. So there may be bots in this game as well if you haven't played Fortnite in a while or haven't played it. But there's 29 people left, so we're doing well here. Um, I've covered a lot of this stuff here. Uh, the la, 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 la chant. <laughs> Tell us a bit about that. Because that, was that Boaster who... Um, he's so recently Boaster, left, wasn't he? yeah, Boaster popularized it by basically being brave enough to sit in the LEC studio and scream it at the top of his lungs. Um, <laughs> basically, initially without support. Um, you know, if Kieran or I were there, we'd join in and it'd become a bit of a two man, maybe three man chant. But yeah. initially, it was very much Jay kind of doing it on his own. But yeah. the chant actually, I believe, and I might be wrong with this, but I think I'm right. It came oh. from. Um, That's someone there. Oh, sorry, where? go on. Go on. Sorry, it was a decoy. Okay. Um, yeah, the, uh, the the chant was actually started by Fern Dog, our, right. our head coach. You know, after someone downstairs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh no, what am I pressing B to roll for? I'm thinking I'm playing Horizon. Oh. Here it is, all on you, mate. We're all I'm down. rolling for night. What am I doing? I've gone up the stairs that you're hiding underneath. <laughs> I think we're, we're gone, aren't we? <laughs> it's it's all on you now, Kieran. Oh, nice. Oh, lads. I was, I was, I was off Coleman's for ages. Are you guys back now? Yeah, yeah, we can. We, I mean, we couldn't hear you, but I've heard Dom the whole time. Sorry. Um, now. We're obviously at five o'clock, guys, and the, the stream numbers have gone down a little bit. What do you want to do? Do you want to play one more game, and I'll try and do our quick fire round? Yeah, yeah, we're happy to play one more. Is that okay? Okay, right. Now this sure. quick fire. I, I I did lose comms a bit there. I don't know if it was something to do with my PC overload, but I think I'm back now. So hello. <laughs> uh, hi, Kieran. Do, do you know what I did, guys? I cannot believe this. Someone was right in front of me using a shotgun on me, and I've pressed B to roll out the way because I've been playing a lot of Horizon Zero Dawn on the PS4, <laughs> and I've started making a wall. Ah, oh, what am I doing? I can't. You can't roll in you guys, Fortnite. You guys all died in front of me, and I just threw a lot of grenades at your bodies as I assumed there were people <laughs> around you. So, <laughs> I don't know what works. nice. Uh, Good streamer Sam, by the way, said hi. Nice stream. Thank you, Sam. If anyone has questions, ask them now. But I'm going to try and go on to the uh, quick fire round, okay? So this is off the top of your head, quick answer. Um, and you can both say an answer at the same time, and we'll see who's different and who's the same. So uh, first just, off, just guys. On, uh, yeah, go on. Sorry, Dom. Logistically, I've gone back to the lobby, I think. I'm loading into the lobby, I think. So, All right, it's, it, it says you're on our team because I can see. Oh no, I'm in. I'm in. Oh, you're in. in. Okay, that's good. I'm in. Okay, we're good to go. Can you hear this, guys? This oh, is I've what he gets for playing on a laptop, by the way. I've got a. Uh... Can you hear that? Uh, yeah, I can hear. You. <laughs> that's my. Uh, if I kill someone one on one, that's I have to do that little. Uh... I better turn that off. Actually, I don't want to get copyrighted on Twitch. Um... <laughs> The quick fire round guy, who Yeah. Who's the better League of Legends player? Who would win in a one v one between the two of you? That's two that's two questions. Because that's I would give a different answer. Okay. Kieran, Kieran, Kieran is definitely the better League of Legends player, but yeah. I would probably win in a one v one just by nature of the fact that I play ADCs and he plays junglers and I would just kite him. Um, yeah. and I, I have done before. So uh... Kieran, is that is that true? You did do a 1v1, didn't you, at the, the studio in Berlin? Is that right? Yeah, I'm not, I think we've done a few 1v1s, and I'm not sure Joel's had the better of them. <laughs> <laughs> my, my main issue is that I can't jump out of the battle bus at the moment. <laughs> I think we're, oh, so we're, we're going to be playing this one a man down, I think, Dom. Okay, that's all right. Um, who's the better World of Warcraft player? And then I'll move on from these... Chest thumping questions. Me, me by a country mile. That one's not up for debate. Now is that? Um, is that uh, <clears throat> PVP or raiding? Because I've I've always liked PVP, uh, Joel myself. Um, I play all three. Touch. Right. So I play uh, raiding, I PVP, and I play mythic plus. I'm better at 
raiding and PvE basically than PvP right now. But I'm tr I'm trying to get good at, at PvP as well. Um, Kieran is a more casual WoW player, I would say. Whereas for me, it's uh, you know it's my game of choice. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, cool. And uh, it, a bit of uh, connection issues here, so I'm going to let Joel answer the questions. But if yeah. I hear some terrible answers, I'll let you know. Key, okay. you should stop uh, streaming your gameplay to Dom on Discord. It might help. Yeah, that's true. And just flip between our cameras, uh, Elliot. Just flip between Joel and my cameras. Yeah, that's cool. Um, uh, just quickly on World of Warcraft, this is my geeky observational question. Have you ever RP'd before? Have you ever done any role play? Now, it might sound weird, but actually, I've played role play in recent years, and it's, it's a lot of fun. It can be a lot of fun. It's like an interactive story, you know? Sure. I mean, I mean, the answer is no. I think when we were a lot younger, we, we may have tried some, like, Dungeons and Dragons or something um, yeah. with some of my friends, but honestly, it's just not really for me. Um, I'm quite competitive uh, by nature, and so yeah. you know, even when I'm playing World of Warcraft, which is obviously a, a role-playing game, if you like, I'm I'm actually just trying to be really good at it. Um, less interested in the the story or the lore, more interested in you know getting good at the game really and playing the the hardest content. We need this guy to help us here. Oh no, this guy's found me. me. And, uh, yeah, we're in trouble. Damn. I don't know if he's seen me. I don't think he has. I played dead. I didn't move. Okay. He's uh, not seen me. I've got two kills over here. I'm flying. Yeah, can you maybe make your way to me? I'm me nowhere near you guys. I'm, uh, I'm crawling behind an enemy right now. He's not Bob seen me. Bob of BGC has asked, can you bring the XL well, Windbreaker? I love the XL Windbreaker. Uh, and if it were up to me, the answer would be... Yes, tomorrow. Um, no, the shark but... sees you. No, <laughs> Kieran's getting eaten by a shark. No. Um, I can't get out. I can't see him on my screen. For, oh, yes, I can. Uh, for good reason, I'm not in charge of creative and uh, and branding. So, okay. Kieran, you've got about one second to get me up. By the way, my health's about to. Oh, oh, yeah. oh that's it, sad. Has it got to you? Now he steals my gun. So he also said you need some help from Wolfies. I don't even oh, think one piece could help us here. Hold on, Joel, Joel, stay alive. I might be able to reboot you. I don't know what this does. Kieran, yeah. stop, stop streaming on Discord, Kieran. Oh. Yeah, Kieran, if you walk tab into your Discord and then stop sharing your screen, it might help with your lag. Should we do one more game, guys? Yeah, we... I've got two or half past. So okay, great. All right. Right, I'll, a bit. I'll try and get through these quick fire ones then. Uh, tea or coffee? Uh, coffee. Definitely Kier coffee. Kieran? Uh, oh, coffee. Right, okay. I I'm neither. Oh, well, it's, this ain't about me, is it, anyway? Right. Um, now, this is a horrible question. Do you both support Spurs? And yes. if so, why? Oh, why? Yes, we do. Uh, we were we were born there. Um, and our dad also is a fan. So, whilst we, we left... We left Tottenham in the surrounding area when we were sort of three years old. Mm. Uh, so we didn't really grow up there, but we, we were born there. And as I said, kind of family ties. So yeah, die, die hard Spurs. Um, yeah. The, a lot of us, really. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I know. Um, to, be, to be honest, had I, had I known your Arsenal affiliation, I'm not sure I'd have agreed to the interview, but we'll, uh, we'll let that one go, yeah. <laughs> well, it's not fun to be a gooner at the moment. I'll tell you that. Dear, oh dear. <laughs> I'd rather we stayed in lockdown, uh, you know, keep the Premier League <laughs> shut down. Just end, end the season where it was, oh. yeah. Just keep, just give Liverpool the trophy and we'll go again. Yeah, we might as well. Um, chip butter or sausage roll? Right. Chip butter or sausage roll? Uh, chip butter. Um, I'm not a pastry fan. <laughs> Kieran? Uh, sausage roll, 100%. Sorry, I think I cut out there. That's okay. That's okay. Um, Nando's or Wagamama's? Oh, Nando's. Thomas. He said, he said Wagamama's, I'm going Nando's though. Okay, okay. Uh, shout out to Megalodontus, by the way, because he's a, he's a writer that's helped me with uh, Esports News UK and he came up with some of these questions for a, a quick <laughs> fight we did a while back and I've, I've nicked some of them. So, um, where do you want to go, guys? Lazy Lake? Why don't we fly all the way? Our, I like teammate, our teammate's Mark somewhere. Oh, Salty Springs. Oh, no, wait, you've changed it. Let's see if right. he goes. Yeah, he, he's gone with uh, what I've suggested. Um, right. Your childhood hero. That's a difficult question. Oh, wow. 
It was. I don't really know much about it here. Anyway. Was. Yours has got to be a sportsman, surely. Definitely not Terry Omri, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that was Elliot, Elliot, the producer, just whispered in my ear, uh, Terry oh, Omri. Right. Okay. Not into yeah. that. No. Um, Ian Wright for me, so, I think. Really tough question. Just, I don't actually, uh, weirdly, it seems like an answer that I should know straight away. I don't really have a good answer for that. Mm. This, this, um, is really, this is really a bit boring, but I was actually from quite a young age super into business and business management. Yeah. Um, maybe explained... I guess some of my uh, career moves to date, but um, super into business and business management was a big fan of uh, kind of major entrepreneurial figures, the likes of Richard Branson, um, you know, obviously Sir Alan Sugar, as he was known at the time, mm. you know, he was a big fan of The Apprentice. And so I used to read a lot of business books and looked up to those guys um, in a sense, but I don't know if that's childhood because that was definitely like late teens or yeah, you know, it's a, eight, it's, 16. Yeah, I think, I think Tough my, I, I know my current hero, the person that I probably read the most about and look up to the most at the moment. And again, it's a bit boring, but uh, it's it, Mr. Warren Buffett. Uh, he's someone that I read a lot of books around, etc. similar to, to Joel. Um, yeah. But childhood hero would probably be just any Spurs player at the time. Mm -hmm. Stephen Carr, the right back, he was Keep a big and we, he was a childhood <laughs> hero for me. Beckham because there was a good five or six year period of your life where you copied David Beckham's haircuts. And I think yeah, I mean, I do, I do love me a bit of Bex. I love me a bit of Bex. It's not, it's not a secret. It's not a the, secret. Uh, He's the, a, the, a wonderful man. The gelled. Uh, Bleached Mohican of uh, Euro 2006 was a personal favourite haircut here. I'm, I'm, still rocking, I'm still rocking. Oh, I'm still rocking his his, uh, his current more you know mature haircut now. Yeah. Um. Ledley King, absolutely. Oh, King, hero. What a legend. Yeah. yeah. What a legend. Great show. Uh, uh, salt and vinegar or cheese and onion? Cheese and onion. Salt and vinegar, cheese and onion is the worst flavour in the bag. Oh, we don't agree on a lot, do we? Ever have? Like, what, do you, what do you mean? Oh, I need bandages here. I'm very low. I didn't even like the name XL when you came up with it, but I went with it. <laughs> what, do you get many jokes, guys, with the whole Microsoft Excel thing? Does that oh, get old? Oh, no. It, do you know what? It, ne it never gets mentioned. On a daily basis. Yeah, you, no, it never gets mentioned. You never see any memes about it, in all, in all honesty. Daily basis. I'm <laughs> bored with that meme, I can tell you that. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, XL Esports has said in the chat, too many. Too um, many, yeah. Well, that's because Nate, the heart... Nathan has to carve a third of our Twitter impressions out of the monthly report to strip out the uh, spreadsheet-related questions. Um, um, I've got one here. Who's the funniest person on Team Excel? That can be anyone. That can be an investor, a player, someone Ryan, in the... Ryan Barnett, hands down. Really? Yeah, he's he's definitely... Hilarious. He's definitely up there. Um, I suppose from a, from a playing point of view... Um, Torre is hilarious. Our support player on our LEC team. Yeah. He's a funny guy. Um, he loves British humour as well. Um, like watches a lot of British comedies, so so uses a lot of British phrases, which is quite funny for a Norwegian guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Uh, who's the most annoying or weirdest person on the team? Kieran. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> My next question was, who's the weirdest Holmes Derby? But that's you've answered it already. Yeah, it's Joel. Thanks for the sniper, by the way, Kieran. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Take that from under your nose. Didn't want it anyway. <laughs> can, can I ask, guys, as someone who... Um, I've, I've had twins last uh, November, so I've got, you know, I've got two boys now and a girl, and because mm -hmm. um, I've got a three-year-old as well. What, what was it like growing up? Were you competitive with each other, or did you have a good... Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, but you... We used to play some some games against each other, and you know, being the older brother, generally I would win, and Kieran would get upset. So we we soon soon had to stop doing that. Um, but no, look, we've we've always been like hyper competitive, but it's always been. I, I don't really know. I can't really give you too many reasons as to why this happened. Maybe our parents getting divorced was kind of one of them. But Kieran and I have always been like super super close. We've had the same interests and same hobbies for as long as my living memory goes yeah. and we would we would always be competitive with those hobbies whether it was 
you know, sport or video gaming. Um, but it was always us against the world, sort of us against other people. Yeah. Uh, we've always been very, very much on the same team. We used to compete together a lot. We've, uh, you know, always played, played together. Um, yeah. So yeah, we are super competitive people and competitive in what we do, but very much so on each other's team as opposed to against each other. Yeah, no, that's that's a good answer. Um... <laughs> I'm not answering that question. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've seen a question in chat that I'm not answering. That's yeah, Sue, but... isn't it? I think is that Sue Collins from uh, his awkward questions Nathan, in. Let's just say Nate, Nathan's uh, Nathan's getting killed off for sure. Like that's uh, for... <laughs> cheap. But... Very good, very good. Um... But on on sports, guys, what what do you play? Other than football, because we know you follow that. What do you play? I mean, we played a lot growing up. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not ashamed to say that Kieran was very much the natural athlete and the natural sportsman. You know, um, I'm all right at football, whereas Kieran basically was one of those annoying little uh, little shits that was good at every sport he decided to try. So yeah. you know, he played, played county rugby county cricket academy level football you know nearly went pro yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, no yeah. no i have no lies in the stream as much as i love having my ego stroked i never made it to county cricket but the rest was true so, uh, sorry guys <laughs> I, sh I should have said at the start we i should have Elliot's gonna have a go at me with this because we tried to uh let everyone know beforehand if we can keep it family friendly so that's my bad for not letting you know but if we can oh, avoid the, no that's fine that's fine it's just because we, we we do oh, have some, joel Get him off. Never let him back. <laughs> I feel like I'm on a BBC uh, radio show, you know. I uh, apologize. apologize. I no, apologize no, it's fine. It's God. fine. It's God, fine. We, we won't invite him back next time. <laughs> um, oh, no, no, I'm in the storm. No, like, in, in all honesty, Kieran, Kieran was great at a lot of sports growing up. I pretty much just stuck to football. Um, I did dabble with American football at university. Yeah. Uh, you know, more, more recently, uh, I've gotten into CrossFit. But um, other than that... Yeah, just football, really. Your CrossFit job. Oh, I, did, I, I had to mention it at least once, <laughs> didn't I? Oh, interesting. I know. I heard I've you seen some it videos on uh, Twitter, I think, of your working out and stuff. I've, it's good, Joel, because it promotes, you know, I like it when people in these sports do that because it shows that it's not just sitting down all day, which is one of the criticisms that yeah, gets thrown yeah. at esports, right? No, I'll be honest, you know, we've, we've always placed a great level of importance on, you know, debunking the stereotype of, of esports being you know, an unhealthy profession. You know, I think people, uh, I've often had conversations with, you know, colleagues in previous jobs that I had where, you know, they try and proclaim that, you know, it's it's unhealthy to encourage people to play video games for sort of eight hours a day. Mm. Um, and I'm like, well, what, what's the difference between people doing that and you having a desk job where you sit at your desk for eight hours a day? Yeah. I said, uh, on top of that, you know, our professional players have fitness regimes uh, they have nutrition plans. They work with sports psychologists. They do stretching oh, no. and mobility. Like they do way more than your average person. So yeah, it's a that's... misnomer that it's unhealthy to be a pro esports player. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's some of it. You know, it, the entire industry has not reached the point where everybody is on strict, you know, diet and fitness plans. But certainly, when you're at the elite elite level, it mm. is getting there, um, and it will continue to go in that direction. And we've always you know, for years, we've always tried to promote, you know, the necessity to look after your body as well as, you know, dedicating the necessary hours to master your craft of the game. Yeah. Um, not just because it's good for you, but because it actually gives you a performance advantage. And I think it's that latter point that people seem to gloss over way too much. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, guys, you, you, you do remember that the storm shrinks, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, this is why I pinged you guys. Yeah, and, I got shot. Ran. Well, well, I... I, I, I made it uh, because I used the stream, which makes you go quicker. What stream? What, the river? There's a street, there's a river next to you guys that makes you go quicker. What, you swim swimming? quicker than you're faster. Oh, yeah. Yeah. you faster. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Well, so thanks, I think thanks I have to find a reason. Well, thanks for telling us now <laughs> after we're done. It was kind of after you. I did, to be honest, guys, I didn't know if I was going to make it, but I did make it. So. Every man for himself. I see how it is. Very is that why so. um, Joe is the chief people officer? Yeah, exactly. He has to worry about everyone else. <laughs> that's that's the that's the issue. <laughs> um, armed with the resistance is asking some questions. I think that's who Torre wants to know. Kieran, is that a real Picasso? 
I don't know what that is. What's that? <laughs> it's my, it, I think it's, oh. no, it's, pa- it's painted by my stepmother, actually, who has a, has a keen interest in cubism and Picasso's oh, form wow. of art. So, yeah, oh, no, cool. it's painted by her. Oh, nice. What are those pictures? I'm not, an art, I'm not an art collector, but it just looked nice, so I put it up. What pictures have you got there, Joel? I'm, I'm, I'm quite boring. I need to... Surely you can out. tell, Dom. Oh, God. It's, it's so, a small it's screen a, where I, I am. Okay, I can't okay, believe well, you haven't worked it out. Is it World of Warcraft? It is, yeah. They're yeah. famous characters from, uh, from the Warcraft. If you're ever you worried know. about Joel's nerd level, just look behind him. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, I need to alt-tab to get a, a closer view. I'm looking at the stream uh, image. Um, uh, I'm with the Resistance has asked if you could form a lull team with just Arsenal players, who would you pick, Joel and Kieran? I don't really like that question. Because I know it's I an opportunity I, for you to take the mick out of Arsenal, isn't it? Yeah, well, I, th- I think I'd quit, actually, at that point. Because they're <laughs> never going to win anything, are they? So, oh, much point in trying at that well, point. You can't talk about winning things, can you, as a Spurs fan? I d- we've won things more recently than you, haven't we? What things? Well, we won a Carling Cup in 2006. <laughs> what? <laughs> No, we no, made. No, no. We've won two FA yeah, Cups in three years. Granted, that was about. We also, we also made the Champions ago. League final last season. Can we but can that's not a win, though, is it? Uh, well, it's Kieran. better than you've done, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm blaming Sue or I'm with the resistance here because they're getting us argued. Oh, there's um, someone coming through. They said Neo Surf is more legit than Carling. Than the Carling well, Cup. The, well, the Neo Surf Cup was a very prestigious championship. I love that. <laughs> that was um, actually one of my favourite events. Like. Obviously biased because you know it was our event, but to be one of the first teams to put on a pre-season event in Pro League of Legends like that was was definitely a another milestone for us mm. and something you know an event we're really proud of. And I, I loved that yeah, event. Was, I'm not just saying that, really guys. Good. I've wrote an article about it. It was just, and it was just before, well, a few months before lockdown, I think. So it, but it was nice to have an event where the UK LOL community had gathered, you know, and uh, yeah. it's all about the community for me. We, we want to do more of that. We want to do loads more of that sort of thing. I mean, that that's our whole, that's the whole point of our brand, in my opinion. That's the whole reason that we, you know, exist is exactly for that sort of community event. And yeah. we haven't done enough, and we want to do more. Yeah. So. Okay. I'll try and whittle through my last few quick fire questions, and then uh, there's more questions in the chat as well. Um, who makes the best cup of tea out of the two of you? That's not even close. That is not even a competition. Joel cannot make a cup of tea. It's if I, awful. If I tell you that my wife will not accept me offering to make her a cup of tea, that probably answers the question, doesn't it? Um, what do you do? I, then? I actually make a mean cup of tea. I'm a I'm a connoisseur at cups of tea. Nice. What I do, Dom, is deliberately make the first one horrendously, and then you never get asked oh, to do to it. Do again. it, yes, yes. I had that. I had a, a former employee in one of my old jobs tell me that. That's actually quite a shrewd move. You know, if you're in an he office, he says that it's shrewd. I'm not sure I'm buying it, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joel's not popular around the office. That's for sure. <laughs> Describe one another in one word. Oh, I actually might have to not be nasty now. Yeah, that's going to be tough. Um... Mm. Well, that is tough. Now you've now you've thrown a spanner in the works. Um, I've got to be nice. Driven. Yeah, I was going to use a similar sort of word for you, though. That's the difficulty. Or maybe, maybe just uh, charismatic. Which, um... yeah, it's hard to do it in one word. So I need mm. an essay. Yeah, um, I was gonna... and at least, at least, at least the introduction would not be complimentary. Um, but <laughs> I'm sure I'd get to the nice bits eventually. Or three words. Yeah, ca- charismatic, driven, um, and loyal. I'll go uh, thoughtful, intelligent, and inspiring. Oh, that's very nice, guys. That's that's very nice. Um, right, last few ones here. I know. Uh, I think I've seen you. You've travelled a bit, Kieran. What's your favourite country to visit? Each of you. Oh, wow. Good one. Um... I'm going to say France because I love skiing. Uh, skiing's possibly my favourite sort of pastime. Mm. Um, I only get to do it about one week a year, but the French Alps are some of the best skiing in the world. So. I'd probably say France because of skiing. Yeah, yeah. I've done, I've done, I've done bits and pieces. Had 
I had wonderful times in um, in Thailand, in the whole of South America. I think mm. the place that, because, you know, I, I've, I've ticked a lot off the bucket list, if you like, but I think the place that I would go back to in a, in a heartbeat, you know, and actually revisit is um, Buenos Aires in, in Argentina. Mm. Absolutely fell in love with the place. I just thought it was... It had everything that you want from a kind of city break, but also, you know, beautiful weather and food was just, you know, red wine and steak every night. Um, yeah, I fell in love with Buenos Aires. Yeah. Okay. Nice answers, guys. Last few. Yeah, go on. By the way, you are. You just... Go and kill something. Come on. Stop. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm in the last eleven. You might want to get your gun ready. Yeah. You, you, you're in the last eleven. I would hide. I would even crouch yeah, around so people so can't hear. Oh, you're gonna Child. have to move for someone up there. How good is your building skills? Uh, I can't. I don't know how to build. You're... That's. I've got a lot of mats though. So let's let's have a go, shall we? Watch let's out! There's go. someone in that building opposite you. There. Watch out! <laughs> oh, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> All right, we're definitely clipping that one. If there's someone Guys. in the chat, please clip that. Oh, funny! Oh, I came sick. And send though. it to Wall Street. I'm, I'm getting I'm getting for my country choice. Look, it was it was countries I've actually visited that I'm not as well travelled as here. Okay, so France France is the choice. But if I could go anywhere that I I haven't been, uh, it would be Japan. Uh, I'm fascinated by kind of Japanese culture, and I, I've never been, so I'd love to go. But, yeah, cool. I, I, that, that's my next trip, Joel. So maybe we can uh, we can hook up on that one. Right, guys, I'm going to exit out of Fortnite. If we just go into um... Uh, the general lobby and just sure. chat we'll wind it down because we've got three minutes left cool. um, yeah no problem yeah we're on cameras and everything so um absolutely boiling by the way yeah i am sweating it's, it's, so, hot, hot. It? <laughs> it's so hot it's like... we're, we're, we're english we don't do well with a scot of heat <laughs> absolutely um lastly i guess guys what uh, there's a few questions I, I haven't got round to, but I think it's been we've had a really good chat. You know, I guess where do you what's next for Excel? Where do you see the organ in, in five years or a few years time, maybe? Um, lifting, lifting LEC trophies, uh, and competing on the world stage. That's the League of Legends bit. Yeah, comp yeah competing, with. competing in global, globally recognised esports competitions. So League of Legends. Worlds, um, those sorts of those sorts of competitions, Fortnite World Cup, um, those sorts of things is where we'll be. I'd say we uh, our ambition is to be bigger than just an esports team. We want to actually have real um, positive cultural impact on gaming as an industry. Um, mm. Obviously, you know, we will come at it from the competitive team angle, but the you know the I, I want to go to an event like an Insomnia Gaming Festival in the UK. And yeah. for everybody there, you know, they're, they're there to see their favorite YouTubers. They're set, there to see their favorite Twitch streamers. Uh, but I want them to be have positive sentiment towards XL, know that XL is a team that they support. Um, mm -hmm. You know, not not everyone, obviously, but, but a, a larger amount of people than would say that today if you sort of quiz them going into a, a UK-based gaming event, not just an esports event, but a gaming event. You know, I'd like I'd like us to to be a brand by that point that is well recognised within the gaming industry, particularly within the UK, um, and is known for basically being a a positive uh, example of what it means to be you know an an ethical, uh, values based organisation that cares about progressing um, issues within our industry, progressing mm. people. Uh, you know we're it's a personal passion of mine to talk about talent management and things like that and the the development of our our people so by that point xl to be bigger than it is today but also you know be recognized um as a fantastic employer in the uk uh, and a fantastic organization to support uh, a fantastic organization to work for mm. uh, to play for um, you know, I think that that is as important to me as how many trophies we're going to lift. But don't get you know, don't get me wrong, we're going to lift some trophies. Um, but it's not the be all and end all. It, it won't be what defines us as a great uh, esports organization or gaming organization. 
Yeah, sure. yeah. I mean, I agree with absolutely everything Joel said. Obviously, I'm more focused on the the former than the latter, and Joel's more focused on the latter than the former, I suppose. Um, but at the end of the day, we both want the same things. We want Excel to to be that organisation that is globally competitive, globally recognised, um, certainly locally recognised in the gaming industry, um, and also a great place to work and a, and a great team to be a part of and a, a great journey to follow. That's people fantastic. to respect excel as a as a brand the way that they respect brands like fanatic now you know mm. that but for for reasons that are more than just competitive success you yeah know, that, that that's that we want to do the right things and we want to we want people to recognize that basically yeah i know i know we're trying to wrap up but it reminds me of the comment that was made earlier about how do you you know go and surpass a g2 and fanatic i mean competitively is one thing but from a from a brand identity is another thing and i think we want to stand for more than any other esports org to date has stood for um most of the most popular esports organizations stand for competitive success um mm. and they don't have uh, you know, don't have much past that. I'm not saying that Fnatic and G2 specifically don't, but a lot of the organisations in the past don't, you know, don't have much behind that um, tro- behind the trophies, essentially. And we want to have a lot more behind that. That's great answers, guys. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. I think it's been a super fun stream. I'd like to do more interviews like this, where I actually play matches, play games with people. It's been fun. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and to, to end with, I'm with the resistance. Asked another question. I think it's quite a silly fun question to end with um and you can uh, you know give one answer each uh would you rather fight one young buck sized deadly or 10 deadly sized young bucks <laughs> so if people don't know deadly uh, is a play- pro player for the league of legends team and young buck is a, 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 a coach right yeah uh, so you're basically saying what like you're saying um, deadly I think, short. i think at the end of the day look like, we're, we're love we're lovers not fighters um <laughs> Oh yeah, the political it's, answer. It's the, oh, answer give, but the, the real answer is, despite was... the fact that young buck size deadly being a, a terrifying prospect, uh, I fancy my chances against one rather than ten. So I'm yeah, going with the I, one. I was definitely yeah. on that. I mean, ten, ten deadly sized young bucks. You imagine them coming at you, blimey. <laughs> Not into that. Yeah, not into that. There you go. And on that note, then, guys, uh, thank you for joining us today. It's, I think we may have had a homepage promotion because we were around 1,500 views at one point. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed it. And we'll put some clips out over our socials, our website, our newsletter over the coming week uh, to promote what you're doing. And I look forward to hearing about what XO Esports does next. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Thank you so much for having us. Um, I hope. I hope we were able to give some insight um, into what people wanted to hear about. And yeah, we'd just, just love to to ask if, if people want to, that they, you know, find the XL socials and, and give us a follow if they don't already. And, and that's going to be the best way to kind of keep up with what we're doing yeah. um, and, and what comes next for us. Do you know, I was going to say that, guys, because we usually have a ticker uh, throughout the stream saying follow these, uh, you know, whoever the, the, the uh, guest is. And uh, there have been a few, but yeah, it's just at XL on Twitter, right? Yeah, at, at XL on Twitter, and you know we have Instagram and YouTube as well. That are two platforms that we're we're making some amazing content for, and really trying to grow TikTok as well. Um, if if you're into TikTok, so yeah, she, you know we're, we're across all of them. So hopefully you can find us, and yeah, would really appreciate any any follows there. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I'll just say quickly before we end as well. You've given pro coaching to our League of Legends. British Esports Championship student winners, which we really appreciate as well. And that's nice to have that integration with at the grassroots level. I, I know that the student teams have really appreciated that, you know, so yeah, we it's appreciate amazing. it. We're always amazing wanting hope. to engage with um, with initiatives like that. So that's that's awesome that it's um, well well received. And and just from me, thoroughly enjoyed my afternoon slash early <laughs> evening playing games with you, Dom, and, and chatting, chatting all things XL. Um, yeah. Hopefully it was useful for those watching. Um, and obviously any follow-up questions, hit us up on, on socials, mine and Joel's personal socials as well. Feel free. Um, yeah. And, uh, and yeah, we, we're happy to answer any more questions. That's great. And World of Warcraft next time, guys. We'll get World of Warcraft PvP next time. Going, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Unfor- unfortunately, I know Joel is better than me at that, though. So that is the, that is the only <laughs> issue. I, I might look competent on that video game. It might be the only one in the world, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Yeah, okay. Well, thanks very much for joining us, Kieran and Joel. It's been an absolute pleasure. Have a good evening, and I'll catch you guys soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks,
Cheers. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Uh, uh, okay, so I, I believe I'm going over to a solo uh, camera now, guys. Uh, thank you once again for tuning in to this stream. I, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to uh, bring up our schedule. I don't have this right in front of me just yet, but give me a few seconds. I'm going to bring up British Esports Twitch schedule over the next uh, few weeks um, just to give you some idea as to what's happening next. So this month, there's only a few more uh, streams left. Um, we have got uh, a British, we've got a show match happening this Friday. It's still, we're still finalizing the last few details. It's a bit last minute, but some kind of representation from British Esports Association, whether it's our team or our student winners, will be playing the British Army's League of Legends team on the British Army's um, Twitch channel. I believe it's British Army Esports, I think is their Twitch channel, but Google it, you should be able to find it. That's 7 p.m. That'll be really fun, no matter what happens, that'll be fun. Raising money for NHS charities together. I believe we're hosting it as well. So you can come onto the uh, British Esports Twitch channel and you'll, you'll see we're hosting British Army there. That's going to be fun. Raising money for NHS charities together. So do come along 7 p.m. this Friday. And then uh, next Monday, I'm not sure if we've announced this or not yet, but I, I believe it's all confirmed. We're going to be interviewing Aerial Powers, um, the uh, NBA professional. So that's going to be uh, the basketball professional. That's going to be fantastic. Asking about women in esports. Um, that's going to be a, a great interview there. That's next Monday at 4 p.m. And then next month in July, we're doing a special takeover month. So <clears throat> if you haven't seen it already, if you go on our YouTube channel, you have a few minutes free, uh, have a look at our, one of our latest videos. It was a takeover that our Splatoon game advisor did, Layla. It was a really fantastic stream. Uh, she spoke all about competitive Splatoon. She had some of the best UK teams playing in show matches, spoke about casting. It was a really good opportunity for her to talk about her one of her main games and enlighten us all uh, into that world. So we're going to make July a takeover month. So if you're someone in esports, you're interested in getting involved, let me know, throw me a DM on Twitter and we can talk. But a lot of these slots are filling up now. We're going to have various people. Some of the confirmed ones include Ryan, who's our StarCraft game advisor. He's going to be uh, doing an interesting chat on Monday, the uh, 6th of July at 4 p.m. <coughs> with Elliot, uh, who's going to be hosting that, Elliot on Team British Esports, who loves StarCraft. So they'll be talking all things StarCraft. I won't go into the others because there's still ones that are to be confirmed. One that is confirmed is a, another show match between British Esports and the NUL, the University Esports um, Association. That's going to be fun. That's on Friday the 17th of July at 4 p.m. So come watch us play there. And uh, I think that's it from me, guys. Um, Elliot, tell me in my ear if I've missed anything, but I think we're going to raid a, a channel. Let's raid Kiandi Mundi because Kiandi, I know him pretty well. He's a really fun animator. He does fun streams. He's, I think this will make his day because I think he averages, uh, usually he has sort of like 50, 100 viewers, that kind of thing. I think this will make his day. Say hi. He works really hard. He cr creates amazing League of Legends animations and he's, he's a really fun guy, has lots of fun, chilled out streams. So please say hi, spam your uh, in the chat to him. Uh, British Esports is here. There we go. Uh, British Esports has said what we can do there. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. I'm waffling now. I'll let you go. Thank you for tuning into this stream and I'll see you next time. Sacco signing out.